Um, hey, um, I'm excited to be able to share with you this morning. So uh, let's just go ahead and open up in a time of prayer this morning as we dig into God's Word. I have something really neat for you this morning, I pray. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this time. God, I thank you for each and every person that is here. Lord, I pray, Lord, that our ears would be open, God. Our ear would be dedicated to you this morning, Lord. God, that uh, it would be pierced, God, to, uh, to, to in, in signifying, God, that, uh, uh, that this ear belongs to you and to you only, God. That, God, that when we hear your voice, the answer is simply yes. Yes, I will respond, and I will not only hear you, but I will obey what you're telling me to do. So, Lord, we thank you for this time. May you be glorified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor T.W. has been in this series, and I believe this is closing it up, although it doesn't need to be closed up because there's a lot of keys that can that, that we can go through. But I believe he said this would be the last message in that. Um, and, and it's talking about keys to the kingdom. It's what we've been going through the last uh, few weeks, I guess. And God's and it's about God's desire is that we believe that God's desire is that you would that that he has something for all of us to step into. And because he desires us to step into something, he has given his children keys, keys that will uh, bring prosperity and it will bring uh, an ability to move into that new purposing, that uh, it would open heaven's doors upon your life in a powerful way. Doors that will bless, doors that will produce power, doors that will produce a great purpose in your life. We saw in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, it says this, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He's talking to um, Peter. I'm dropping money all over the place. I'm going to leave that there. I'm not even going to pick it up. Chapter 19, verse 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth shall be loosened in heaven. In heaven. This morning I was looking at uh, my Bible app here, and I, I, I like to do this sometimes. I don't know if you like to do this, but um, that's a really neat thing about the Bible app is that you can just uh, move back and forth through different uh, translations and, and, and kind of get a feel of what uh, another translation may, may read or may say. And in the Message Bible, I know the message takes some liberties, but I think I really like how the Message Bible says this verse. Verse 19, it says this, and that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. I love how it says that in that way. And Pastor T.W. talked about a few weeks ago about the key of praise that it unlocks the presence of God, that when we begin to pray, I mean praise, when we begin to give him glory and we begin to put all our attention towards him, something incredible begins to happen. I mean, there's a promise in the Bible that God inhabits what? The praise of his people. So if you want God's presence in your life, if you feel like you're all, all alone, if you feel like nobody else is around, you feel like, man, I'm, I'm in the dumps right now. Man, man, turn on the radio. Do something. Enter into praise because as you begin to praise, his spirit begins to fill us. How many know, so many times have you, have you went into a, a praise service in a, in a time of worship and you left and you feel like, man, I just really felt the Lord, of the, I really felt God's presence. That all of a sudden, the things that I worried about, the storms of my life, the things that I was facing, all of a sudden, in the midst of that praise, they really don't seem that big anymore. They really don't seem that significant anymore. Because I begin to realize that the one that I'm praising to, the one that I'm giving glory to, is much bigger than anything that I'm facing now is much bigger than any storm that is before me that I'm in right now or any mountain that I have to go through. It's much big. He's much bigger than any of those things, and that's what praise does. He talked about the key of prayer. 
And prayer, what does prayer do? One of the aspects of prayer is that it lines us, aligns our heart with God's heart. It aligns our heart with God's heart. Powerful. I mean, no, sometimes we go into prayer and we, we say, well, God, I, 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 want, I want you to be aligned with my heart. But how many times that when you've gone into prayer and you look at the Lord's prayer, as we begin to look at Lord's prayer, it, it doesn't align God's heart with our heart, but as we look at the Lord's prayer, it aligns our heart with God's heart. Not my will be done, but whose will be done. God, I, I know I got a lot of issues going on right now. I know I got a lot of things that I need to bring, uh, bring before you. But man, above anything else, I want my heart to be lined with your heart. I want you to do what you want to do, Lord. So let me get out of the way so that you can, so that you can move. So prayer, prayer lines our heart with his. So this morning, this is a big one. I mean, this is a big one. This is a big key. God, he's given us a lot of keys. I borrowed my wife's keys this morning. Isn't that great? A lot of keys. I don't know why she has so many keys. There's a flashlight. This is a little flashlight. I mean, we don't even have these many locks in our house. We have one house. That's it. That's it. I think that's the trailer key. I don't know, you know, and there's just a lot of key. Anybody else have more keys than this? Anyone is pointing fingers. There's a lot of keys. God's given us a lot of keys, church. He's given us a lot of keys, and it's, he hasn't withheld keys. He said these keys are yours to possess. All you need to do is begin to use them, is begin to use them. And this is a big one. This is a big one. We might fight with this one. This is one that sometimes maybe goes against some of the things that we may struggle with at times. We fight with it. We say, no, uh, nope, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can go there. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I can say that. I don't know if I can uh, 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 be like that. And we fight with this because when we hear God's voice, we begin to debate whether or not we want to what? Obey it. And as we begin to fight with that obeying part of it, it's like we have the key of obedience. Here, I've given you the key. All we need to do is begin to access it. But because we struggle with the obedient parts of it, we in, in return, we don't receive the benefits of beginning to unlock the door that God has given us in the midst of obedience. So this key is the key of obedience. Faith in Jesus brings forth a, a key of obedience that unlocks the kingdom's fruit upon your life. The truth is, we can be the most fruitful giver. But if we are in disobedient with our creator, it will be fruitless. You can pray all you want. Uh, you can give to the needy. You can uh, uh, take in the orphans. You can clothe and feed them and do um, all these wonderful things and they're good things. But without obedience, it'll be for nothing in the eyes of God. Faith in Jesus brings forth the key of obedience that unlocks the keys of fruit upon your life. Do you want fruit upon your life? We have to begin to obey, to obey God. I mean, if we look at the, this example in Samuel chapter 13, you remember the story, you remember uh, Samuel, you remember that uh, Saul, he, uh, the, the armies were coming against Saul, and, and his men were, uh, were ready to fight, and the time was coming, but yet there was a sacrifice that needed to happen, that needed to be done to be able to seek God's favor upon that fight, upon that, that time. And Samuel is the one to offer that sacrifice, and according to what God had commanded, 
Saul knows this. Saul knows that Samuel is the one to do the sacrifices, to perform the sacrifice. Saul knew this, but however, he grew very impatient. Very impatient. And after all, um, the, it's battle time. It's, it's, fine. it's time to go fight. It's time to go, go, go win this battle. It's time. The, the army is before us. And Saul knows that he needs to wait. But does he wait? The story, the, the, the situation here, he doesn't wait. He grows very impatient. Very impatient. And, and so as his impatient grows, he decides to what? He decides to do the sacrifice himself. He decides to do it himself. And then Saul shows up and Saul tells him that he's done a very foolish thing. In a nutshell, his oh, disobedience is to dis disobey God is to be foolish. And obedience is better than a sacrifice we could ever make. Obedience is better than any sacrifice we could ever make. Obedience is better than anything that we could do for, for God. Obedience. Let me say that again, because obedience is better than anything that we can do for God. God, I want to obey you. I don't want to be so, so uh, brought into this work performance driven uh, uh, relationship with you that it's more about what I do for you than rather than what I'm obeying you to do. Do you get that? It goes beyond all that. It goes beyond obedience grows goes deeper into our heart it goes deeper into the heart it shows a willingness and a faith without faith you can't you can't obey God so what God actually wants is obedience based on faith we know this in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16 verse 6 it says it says without faith it is impossible to please God so how does your faith show? It shows when we obey God. This faith-driven obedience is where you obey because God said it. And if he said it, then I will be sure that it will happen. I remember when, when, uh, when our, well, you know, I've done this with all of our kids. And if you're a, you're a dad, I'm sure you've done it as well. I remember when they're first starting to swim, specifically like Evan, because Evan was like a big scaredy cat, and we see Gavin the same way. It's interesting to see the similarities between Gavin and Libby. If you're not sure, Gavin and Libby is our eight-year-old twins. We have Evan, who is 21 now, and Katrina, who is 18. And as we're raising Gavin and Libby, we're seeing the very similarities between them. It's very interesting, even in their personalities. It's kind of odd, but, I mean, I guess that's... Yes, that's why we know that's our kids, huh? That's good. Um, so, uh, but I did this with Evan uh, when he was younger and he was learning how to swim. In fact, he didn't know how to swim at all. And, and I know us you know, dads, we probably did this. I would get in the pool. You know what I'm talking about? You get in the pool and they would stand on the ledge like this. And they would look into the pool, and, and, and you'd be in the pool, right? And you'd, and you'd look at your, your son or your daughter, and you would say, jump, Right? And, and, and they're like, and they got their floaties on, right? And the little floaties on and, and they're, they they want to jump, but yet they're, they're a little scared and fearful. And us dads, we don't want to raise uh, children that are fearful, uh, you know, uh, of the unknown and that are fearful and scared. We said, we wanted them, them to conquer their fear. And here I am. I've said, jump. If you jump, I will catch you. Right. And there they are, they're, oh, I don't want to do it, oh, Dad, I don't want to do it, right? And they kind of go through those emotions, like, I don't want to do it, I'm scared, I don't want to do it. Come on, jump! You know, now you're getting madder because they're not jumping. Come on, jump! You know, they like look to their mom, they're like, Mom, you know, Dad's dead, jump, Dad, you can jump, it's, it'll be okay, right? Yes, that's a mom for you, right? It'll be okay, Dad will catch you. And they're trying to convince them that, that I'm someone that they could trust. 
that I'm someone that they could put their faith in you and in me. I mean, I've never let him drown. You know, what am I going to do? Let him drown? See, see, that's a lesson for you. Don't trust anybody, right? <laughs> but they're drowned, so it's not much of a lesson. This is, we could tell that story to, our, to your siblings one day. Don't trust your dad. And so, but they're, you know, why? Because, and then they end up j jumping in the midst of jumping. Of course, I'm there to catch them and we swim and we have a good time. Many times we hear God's voice and we need to realize who God is in our life. Can you trust him? And my answer to that question is, yeah, you can trust him. When you hear his voice in your life, when you hear him speaking, when he says jump, and even though it looks very scary, even though it may look uh, like, like, like I shouldn't be doing this, we can jump. When he says, I, can, I will catch you, he will catch you. When he says he'll make it all right, he will make it all right. We just simply have to obey. And as we obey, we begin to have the benefits. We begin to see the blessings of obeying. How much fun it is to swim. How cool it is to jump off of a ledge into water. How neat that is. The last thing we want is Mature Christians that have grown up their whole life in the church, standing on the ledge and saying, I don't want to jump. I, man, I don't want to do I've been living in the church my whole life. I've been serving God my whole life, but I'm here on this ledge. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't, can't believe it. I don't know. I don't want to jump. It looks too scary. In the midst of that, we show how much we really put our faith and trust in him. How weird would it be if my 21-year-old son walks up to the pool and says, nope, I don't see that happening. Nope, I don't see that happening. I'm never jumping in this water. No way. Right? And how foolish it is for us, even as believers, as mature people, in the Lord, many times we walk up in the edge, ledge of faith and trust and obedience. And we say, God, yeah, I know how big you are. Man, I know you're the creator of everything. Man, I know that, man, you hold everything in the palm of your hand. And, man, I know I can trust in you, but, man, I don't know if I can jump. Can I tell you this morning, you can put your faith and trust in God, that he is there and he is present. He is present. Obedience. Obedience unlocks God's power. In Luke chapter 5, we see this story that is being played out. Jesus told Simon to cast their nets on the other, uh, cast their nets deeper into the water. And Simon answered in verse 5, he says, Master, we've been working all night. Do you remember the story? We've been working all night. I, we've caught, we, we haven't caught anything. And we went, in this, and he went on to say, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. On your word, we will do it. That is obedience. And that is what God wants from us. It is all he needs, that faith-driven obedience, that when you're ready to say, God, I, I've, I've tried this before. God, I've, I've done this before, and I failed. But, I, but God, because you're saying it now, and because based on your word, I will try it once more. I've done this before. I don't like it. But based on your word, I'm going to do it again. My family is saying it is impossible. 
but I choose to obey you based on the faith that I have in, in you. My environment is not the most supportive of me right now. My environment is not this, even supportive of this idea of your idea that you're giving me right now. But because I care more about my relationship with you, I don't care about what others are saying. I don't care about my environment. If you said it, Lord, then I will do it. If you said it, Lord, then I will, I will do it. No one is supporting me. I feel like I'm all alone. I feel like I'm out there all by myself. Everyone thinks I'm nuts. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. But because I have faith in you, because I have faith in your word, I'm going to do exactly what you tell me to do. That is obedience. And this is the type of obedience that he's calling you as believers this type of trust and obedience in him and him only. It is through our obedience that we unlock the power of God. His miracles in your life. When this occurs, we truly become a vessel used by God. We want God's, you want God's power in your life. You want his power in your life. You want to unlock that door of God's power in your life, then obey. Obedience not only unlocks God's power, but unlocks God's abundance upon your life. And when we look at this scripture that we just read in verse 6, it says that when they had done, they had caught such a large number of fish that their nets begin to what? You know the story? You watch Chosen. <laughs> their nets begin to what? Break. And not only break, but their boat begin to sink. They had to signal their partners. They had to signal others to come over to the boat to help them. Because it filled up with so much fish and they needed the help. Their nets begin to break. Their boat begin to sink. They had to ask others for help. All for what? A good reason. We need to get to this point. All for a good reason. So if you want God's blessing in such a way that you can't handle it anymore, then what? We, we obey. You want to bless, we want to be blessed so much that, that, uh, that, that you need someone's help to, to come in and help you? Then obey. If you want your farm to produce so much product that you can't contain it, you can't even give it to God, then you obey. What if my nets begin to break? What if my, my boat begins to sink? The truth is, I don't mind if my nets begin to break if it's for a good re reason. I don't mind if my boat begins to sink if it's for a good cause. I don't mind it at it all. If I have to yell and, sh and shout for help, as long as it's for a good reason. I have no problem with all that, but I need to obey God and what God wants me to do. He wants me to obey him. They fished all night and caught nothing. All night they fished, caught nothing. And he says... Cast your nets deeper. I need to do exactly that. When he says move to a place, I need to do exactly that. When circumstances say no, I obey. When my gut says no, I need to what? Obey. When, when I have no other means, when I have no means, when there's nothing you obey God when you can't seem to when when you can't seem to find any other way you just simply obey obey when you can't see where where it's leading to sometimes we want that assurance don't we sometimes we want that assurance to know that that it will all work out 
We want a sign. We want, we want God to show us, you know, the, the end resort, end resort of, of our obedience. But a lot of times that's not how God uh, responds and that's not how God gives us. He simply says, will you obey what I'm telling you to do? Would you have your faith in me? Would you trust in me? We look at Abraham. He had no idea where he was going, but he obeyed. These fishermen, they obeyed Jesus, and it led to the biggest catch of their life, probably. It was more than they could even obtain. Double than what their boat could even receive. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says this, that God can do abundantly and exceedingly more than we could ever ask for. These fishermen were only looking for a substantial amount of fish. Check this out. But look at what they caught. Look at what they caught. Exceedingly and abundantly more than what they could ever imagine. He is the God of abundance, the God of exceedingly more and more and exceedingly enough, the God of excess, the God of overflowing blessings, favor upon favor, grace upon grace, from one level to the next level, all the needs is, is based on obedience, absolutely obedience, that's all we need. He wants a yes. Lord, I am willing to do that. Yes, Lord, right away. Yes, Lord. Hey, I'm on it. Yes, God. Let me, let me do that. Yes, God. I will do that with a pure heart and a willing heart with obedience and gladness. Simon and his companions upgraded from being a fisher of fish to a fisher of men. So that leads us to the next point. The last one is obedience unlocks God's greater purpose in your life. In Luke chapter 5, verse 10, it says this, when Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid, you will, you will fish for people who, who move from one, he will fish for people. What was he doing? He was moving, moving Simon from one level to the next level. He was moving Simon from one purpose to a much greater purpose. Jesus had something bigger and better in store for him. What is Jesus calling for you? What is Jesus calling you to do? What about what Jesus is, what about this? What if Jesus is calling you to do something? And that something is just a fraction of what he really wants from you. What if there's more than lies behind that one thing? More than lies behind that one level that he wants to wants you to be able to get through this one level. As you get to that one level, he says, I got another level for you. I got another place that I want you to be. I needed to get you through this one situation, this one uh, element of trust and obedience. As you get through this, I, guess what? I got something else in store for you, but I need to get you through this first. Can he trust you with a little so that he can give you more? Can he trust you with something little that maybe seems insignificant but it requires a great trust and a great faith and it seems so big in your eyes but in God's eyes he said no that's not that's not big Tr trust me that that's not that's not big you you think it's big you think it's like an iceberg now but trust me what I have for you is much bigger than an iceberg it's much bigger than you can even think and imagine but will you trust and obey him even now. Can Jesus say to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with enough to God to be entrusted with even more of the glories 
in his kingdom. I'm going to close this morning with this verse. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 4, and then 6 through 13. And if you, let's stand this morning because we're going to go back into worship in a second. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, be careful to do all his commands that I have commanded you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall, you, shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of, the, of your ground and the fruit of your cattle. The increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall you when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before you. Someone needs to hear that. Let me read that one more time. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you have, you undertake. He will bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself, as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways... And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your ground. And within the land the Lord your swore to your fathers to give you, the Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give the rain to your land in a season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commands of the Lord, which I've commanded you today, be careful to do them. Church, what a powerful word. What a powerful uh, promise that is to us this morning. We can stand on his promises. We can put our faith and trust in him and him only. Let us praise him. Let us give him glory. Let's walk in obedience in all things. Let our ear be 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 a uh, be anointed this morning to heed, to hear the word of the Lord, not just this morning, but each and every day that what I, what you speak to me, God, I will what? I will obey without question that even though I may fear, I will, I will, maybe even times I will walk in fear, but I walk with authority and power and that you have given me. And I know that you will never leave me or forsake me. So today only, I will say yes, not today only, but today, I will say yes 
to you, O oh God, and I will obey and I will walk in the favor that God has given me, that you have given me as your child, as your children, we pray. Lord God, we love you and we thank you. And God, as we enter in this time of worship, God, may we worship you. May you speak to us, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.